the Lord. Praise the Lord. Woo! Praise the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. All right, all right. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Heart Matters. How many know we got matters of the heart, huh? Amen. We thank you for joining MDL Ministries tonight, today, and we just thank you so much that we have an opportunity to come before you. And we, this is our segment of Heart Matters. And we look around, we always talk about relationship. It's the essence of why we were created. Amen. And how we are to function. Hello on earth. Amen. Relationships is vertical is with God but then the relationships we're responsible for also is relationships one with another right amen amen, amen. and so tonight we're going to talk about something that's really important I want you to call somebody I want you to Facebook somebody <laughs> I want you to tell them to tune in tune in to this segment of heart matters we're going to talk about the spirit of lying tonight the spirit of lying you know lying is so prevalent prevalent in our in our in our nation amen when we look around lies are being told all the time relationships break up a lot because of what lies and it's not just husband and wife and you often hear me say that but any type of relationships have to be based on what truth praise God I know y'all y'all not talking tonight but that's all right I'm gonna hit everybody today okay all right praise the Lord lying is a spirit that comes from Satan and when it comes from him, it can perpetuate because we sometimes lose control of the things that we say. That's why the Bible says that indeed that the tongue is it's hard to what? Tame, praise God. Nothing but the spirit of the living God can contain our what? Tongue. But the tongue is not where the lie starts. Thank you very much. The lie starts in our heart and from the deception of the evil one. So I did a little study and came up with a couple of things. And I'm going to talk about the seven levels of lying. How many know that there are levels of lying? Uh, yeah, there is. There is. And not all of us are guilty of what have lied before and all of us are guilty of being what L lied to amen and that kind of goes along with the fact that every seed we sow we reap hello <laughs> all right so let's take a look at this uh, we have Sarah Sumpner Sarah Sumpner is indeed the first female to ever serve as dean of a conservatory college or universe seminary uh, seminary she is known as an entrepreneurial theolo theologian and so when we look at it she says that there are seven levels of lying the first one is that you just tell a little lie you know how we call it the little white lie hello somebody and we call it the little lie. a little lie can light a match and it can cause what a real fire Oh, yes, it can. Go home and tell your husband that you just spent $1,000 on a pair of shoes. And if you're not in that bracket, you're going to have a problem because you didn't don't have those shoes with you. You might have spent that $1,000 on something else, like giving it to a family member or doing something else. Hello, somebody. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. I know it's going to be tight, but it's going to be right because we're going to help somebody tonight. Amen. Yeah, you tell your the husband say or the wife says, no. No, Johnny can't have that or Johnny shouldn't have that or what we don't want Johnny to have that we want Johnny to work and earn that and what happens one or the other goes and provide it and then they say they didn't do it that they did some chores only to find out later Johnny didn't do anything and you know why you can tell because Johnny got an attitude with the parent that didn't give it to him hello somebody amen amen so when we look at it lies can start real problems in our relationships you know many times we hurt one another or we do something wrong instead of going and to repent to that person we will make up an excuse for that lie and we would and we will make up an excuse which really is the cousin to the lies they taught me so we want to learn to do what be honest with one another it says unless we confess the truth about our lie we will probably go to level two and what is level two? Level two is where you begin to lie to protect yourself. You know why you was out late at night. 
while you was hanging with the girls when you, uh, you were really hanging with the girls but you were supposed to be over your mama's house i'm talking good tonight i know i'm talking good tonight and it says that these particular lies as they build up they begin to weaken our body and they begin to weaken our psychological state lies again are from our demonic and they are from what the devil hello somebody when we lie we learn to lie about one thing and then we learn to lie about what another my mother used to put it this way you need a lie to cover up the first lie you told <laughs> Bless her rest and soul. Praise God. Self-protect. Many people do that. It is most seen in corporate America where companies protect themselves by lying on other things, other people, other circumstances, instead of just what? Taking the responsibility. Children do that when they think they're going to get a whooping or they're going to get disciplined. They won't do. Well, it's children, family services say we don't whoop anymore, but um, they ain't visited my house and praise the Lord because we know that sometimes children just need to be what disciplined hello and with the rod as the old folks say but the real deal is that when we look at it self-protect children why were you late from school oh I was helping the teacher you call the teacher teacher left almost before the child did getting off the premises hello and so those type of things cause real problems and I like what she put in here she put in Sarah Rose she said lies are weaklings and they need body Bodyguards. So they need one lie to what? Bodyguard the other one. Hello. It says the third level is that you develop a habit of lying. And we know that that is easily done. And we begin to lie about other things. It starts off with one thing and then it progresses to what? Two or three things. And then it becomes a habit in those particular areas because we're doing what? Self-protecting ourselves. When we engage in the spirit of lying, we are being deceitful. We are being setting ourselves up to be mistrusted and we are setting ourselves up for the enemy to literally devour our relationships. The fourth step of, of lying, it says that indeed you are self-deceived. You know, when they said, you know, I, I used to get high, y'all. I t you told y'all my testimony. I was crazy as a Betsy bug. And they say you tell one lie to cover up another, right? But now you just lie because you believe the lie. You, you know, you know what I'm saying? I ain't high. Uh-uh, I ain't high. I'm all right. I can drive home. Hello, somebody. Uh-huh. Yeah, we tell that. Oh, uh, my account is not is not overloaded. I'm not that much in debt. Hello. And you look at how to work two, three, four jobs. I ain't trying to talk about nobody. Just talking about who I'm talking about. Amen. When we look at it, we find that indeed, I know I should get a car note that is around $400, but instead I'm trying to get an $800 because I think... I can handle it. And before I know it, I'm what? I'm in debt over my head. I know self-deceit is the worst type of deceit that we can have. Because when you deceive yourself, it is very difficult to retrieve back from that. That is not only a spiritual issue. It is a deep spiritual issue. It is a psychological state. It is an emotional state. And there's a whole lot of things that go into the fact that one would deceive themselves. Oh, I love my soul and so and so whatever whoever it is but you don't spend any time there you don't talk to I'm just telling the truth uh, I, I what I do ought to show that I what I love you what you do do show me that you love me hello because you're not doing anything amen you in your mind you think you are you know you you he would like to have at least four cooked meals a week but you only cook him one a week hello somebody but to you it's an exaggerated state when he says one because you see yourself in the kitchen all the time knowing that you avoid it like the plague hello somebody so we need to take note that just because we are deceived does not mean that everybody around us is deceived and it definitely does not mean that God does not what does not see us praise be to God we look at the fact that we must learn that there are uh, I think she said somewhere in one of the researches that I read it says that that when you meet somebody anytime you meet somebody the average person lies 
at least three times in the first minute that they meet a new person. That is something right there. Amen. Amen. And then it says that we uh, have a tendency to lie 200 to 300 times a day, depending on what environment we're taking in. Who are we really seeking truth from? What are we deceiving ourselves about? And what is contaminating our families that we have to project those lies into our families? Amen. 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 We need to really stop and search ourselves today. Why don't we have relationships that last? And, 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 and again, I'm not just talking about married people. I'm talking about mother and daughter. I'm talking about father and sons. You know, in fact, where we have some people who are missing and have been missing. And instead of just coming clean and said, I was young. I was irresponsible. I shouldn't have did it. Please forgive me. Can we start where we are? Because we can't do anything about yesterday. We go ahead and make what? Excuses and try to justify and rationalize, which is our next step, why we do what we do. The truth of the matter is that there is no real reason to continue down the lane of lies. There is no reason to continue to deny your, your character or your ethics or your morals or whatever it is God can't help us until we face us amen till we face ourselves until we do what ask him to intervene now that you not only believe the lies not that you only believe the lies you justify the lies as positive good mm. y'all ever been in a situation like that Yes, uh-huh. Somebody went and they went in your purse and they took out some money. And they took that money and they went and did something with it. And then they justified as being a, a reason why they went to do it was for good. I w wanted to get your car fixed. I wanted to buy you something. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm telling the truth. And it's not just, I said purse, but it could, be, it could be a wallet too. It could be anything. Amen. The real deal is if you wanted to get it for me, you should have used your money to do it with it. Amen. Oh, yeah, I'm talking good. I'm talking good. It says level five. Lying is especially tempting in leadership levels. When we look at people, indeed, um, uh, uh, that are of a higher organization, they do it. To, they fluff the books. Hello. Oh, yeah, they alter the documentation. That's a lie because lie is more than opening your mouth. A lie can come in a written form. Amen. It can come in a gesture or an intended gesture. Hello. Oh, yeah, we can insinuate as we call it. The real deal is that lies have destroyed more relationships than anything else because even when it comes to money, being what they say is the number one thing is because we are not, fi uh, we are not fiscally responsible responsible and therefore we lie about what what we do with it when I was looking at the research I was looking at different things and it says that we lie about money how we spend it we lie about uh you know women we're really good with this one we go oh honey that's you look good girl you kicking it bam Ooh, you wearing that thing oh this whole thing I had this in there forever we just took the tags off of it hello somebody we and it's been hanging there since yesterday or this morning and not <laughs> <laughs> All right. So so the real deal is that these little lies hinder our prayers. They hinder our relationship with God and they hinder our relationship with one another. After a while, we feel like we can say anything and treat a person any kind of way. But the Bible tells us that we are to do what? Do unto others as we would have them to do unto us. It tells us that we should be girded up with the belt of truth and that truth should reign in our loins. And even when it hurts, we need to do what? Tell the the truth amen amen and then it says that lies happen it happened in personal realms too and you don't understand she just ain't giving me what I need he just ain't kicking it like he is come on somebody don't get quiet on me don't get quiet on me we er, almost everybody it, in your environment has used that at one time or another. Hello, somebody. Yeah, he don't make me feel like she make me feel uh, 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 like he make me feel. Hello, you know, those type of things. I just have more fun when I'm over here than I do when I'm over there. Hello, somebody. But how much are you putting into it to make it fun? How much are you putting into it to make it right? How much are you putting into it to make it righteous? Hello, somebody. How much are you putting into it to bring 
bring some enjoyment, some enlightenment to it. Amen. 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 I know this is a hard subject because we live in such a free world now. Everybody can do what they want to do. I have one child, a grandchild. Lord, he going to get me. He going to get me, but I'm going to tell it anyway. It, he just, cause he insists on living the way he want to live. And he cannot continue to live on live that way. In his mind, and really not his mind, is it, is their mind, okay? They think that it's okay. But that's not the way God designed relationships for us when it comes to families. Hello, somebody. The bottom line is that God has already set up the blueprint for us. And if we would walk in truth and live in truth, hello, then we would be able to get the benefits and rewards of truth. And it says that you develop a technique. I like this part. You can last so long that you got a technique to it. Lord, have mercy. You compartmentalize it. You know, you know how people talk to you. Well, what's such and such and such a thing? They don't hear all the conversation. All they hear is just that little bit. And they respond to just that little bit. They go down that vein on that little bit instead of looking at uh, addressing the whole issue. Amen. The real deal is that many, many people lie every day, whether they're saved or unsaved. In relationships, heart to heart, you don't want to lie because because lying hurts people. Lying sets people up to be deceived. It, it makes them feel disval uh, unvalued. Amen. Unvalued. And the real deal is that when we love people, we want to make them feel the opposite. We want to make them feel that they can trust us. That in fact, we trust them. Hello, somebody. Because the average person that lies a lot to you is lying because they don't trust themselves, first of all. And that they, they're projecting on you what they are doing themselves. So you have to be careful careful about that. Amen. Amen. I see some eyes looking, some heads rolling. I see some thought, thoughts flying across the room. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Help us today, God. The level six liar is often found in upper enchilades of bureaucracy. The level six liar, she says, might smoothly move from one constituent to another. Uh -huh. You know those that plant seeds, you know. Joe, I heard through the grapevine you're going to get the promotion and they're going to fire so-and-so, you know. Or so-and-so, we plan to promote you when really all the while they plan to walk you out the door as soon as they can get that particular person in place. You know what I'm talking about. Hello, somebody. Yeah, the real deal is that we play those games every day. And God is saying, I don't want those type of relationships for my people. And and I could go on and on. And even in the church, we lie. We tell people, I'm going to give you this and I'm going to put you in this place and I'm going to put you in that place. And before we know it, there's something other spirit that has entered the church and all kinds of things have happened. Amen. But the real deal is that God wants us to live by truth. The Bible says in, 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 um, in uh, John, the 8th chapter, 31 and um, 32, 31st and 32nd verse, it says, ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. If you want to live a real life of holiness, a real life of righteousness, if you want to be pleasing in God's sight, if you want to have a good reputation, you must and I must learn to walk in truth. Hello. The real deal is that any lie, any lie is an antichrist spirit. That's what it is. Whatever the reason is that we say it, we do it, it doesn't make a difference. You know, sometimes we fool ourselves. We say, well, I'm only hanging around them because um, I, I, I really kind of like them and, and so and so. No, you using them. You misusing them, whatever the case is. Amen. Many children's hearts are broken because a parent will say, I'm going to take you to a certain place and we're going to spend quality time. But their job come first or their mate comes first or their sports come first or uh, hanging out with their girlfriends come first. Lies destroy relationships. Amen. It is a matter of the heart because the heart is where everything starts at. Amen. The motive and the mood of your heart. Amen. Will dictate what come out your mouth. And because 
we out of the heart we speak the what the abundance of life amen so the bottom line is that we have to be careful to check ourselves in this land there is a spirit of lying running rapid amen amen, amen. people are promising to do things that they cannot deliver even because they're not in the position to deliver it the other thing is that we learn to lie to self protect our to, to protect ourselves on jobs make a mistake did, did instead of going to report it we do what we cover it up hello somebody we have to learn that it's either for God if or for God I die or you're not standing on the God side at all you're not leaning on the side at all it's plain and simple as that and instead of checking other people we need to do more self-evaluation Ooh, I know it's good. I know it's good. I know it's good. I feel it in my sanctified soul. This is good today. It says you see it as a duty to lie when you work in certain levels. You see it as a duty. In other words, you are compelled to do it. <coughs> Excuse me. Because it's like a job to you to cover up wrong in your workplace, to cover up wrong in your home. When your children, and many of our children today would not be in trouble and some would not be dead if we would have just let them pay the price of the first crime they did. If we would have just raised them right. If we would have been closer, hello, instead of making an excuse for not being there. Hello, somebody. Oh, yeah, if we'd have steal the right things in them. If we wouldn't have lied about why we didn't go to church and just got up and went to church. Hello. Amen. If we would have had devotion at home. I remember in the old days, devotion didn't start when we got to church. Devotion started in the house. They didn't depend on the church people to teach us. It was mom and daddy who taught us about David and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all of them. Hello, somebody. It was God himself that reigned in the house. And the house started with truth. And the children had values. And they had morals. And we raised productive people in, in society. But today we have gone all the way to uh, both the left and the right I guess just the left really more than anything and we have decided that we would not do anything that would uh, represent God we're doing everything that represents the antichrist we must repent we must repent and ask God to forgive us if you this is you if this is what you practice and if you've been walking in an antichrist spirit standing against truth which is Christ Jesus is not just denying who he is it is denying everything about him hello somebody denying his words denying his precepts denying his co uh, com uh, commandments then we have been walking contrary to that which pleases God and we need to repent America needs to repent and I need to declare that tonight we need to repent against the things that we have done and the way we have acted and the lies that we have told we have told to each other we've told to foreign countries we've told to our children and to one another praise be to God we need to repent it is lies that mess up our world today if we don't like some we need to tell folks folks that marry you knowing they don't like the way you cook instead of just telling you I don't like like that amen. amen I'm telling the truth I'm telling the truth in fact just get the girl some help hello Amen. Amen. Get the girl some help. Praise be to God. And somebody will marry you saying that, you know what? I know how to fix up your house and I know how to repair and come in there and mess your stuff up. Amen. Instead of saying, I don't know, but baby, we can get some money and we can get somebody to do it the right way. We have to learn to be honest, to learn to be pure. So tonight I'm praying. I'm praying because we need to come back to some basic foundations in Christendom. We need to come back to the place where we say, God, I'm going to watch my tongue. I'm going to guard my heart because these issues in here need to be checked before I speak. They need to be checked before I do what? Poison and contaminate somebody else. They need to be checked before I gossip and lie on somebody. They need to be checked before I criticize and, and condone that which is wrong. They need to be checked. Hello, somebody. The issues of my heart need to be checked if I haven't gotten over the rape I went through if I haven't gotten over the problem I had in my house or whatever the case went down in my house I'm going to project that on every person I see that look like they might be in that in that same type of uh, uh, thing we need to make sure that we tell we check our own selves what's wrong with my heart that I have to tell you a lie where what am I coming from hello yeah. 
Amen. Amen. What is still plaguing me or running in me? Hello. How much have I given my soul to the devil that I've got to lie to you? The Bible says that we should know what? The truth. And the truth will make us free. Let's look at Ephesians 4 and 15. It says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ Jesus he says speaking truth and love you know what we don't have to exaggerate we don't have to hurt people if we speak truth and love no matter what it might not feel good when we're speaking it it might not it might even hurt us to have to tell it hello somebody but if we do it in love the Holy Spirit will set up that person to be receptive of because we leave God out of all the things we think we have to fight every battle for ourselves we think we have to make ourselves look better than we really are the real deal is that God will pronounce you in somebody's life God will reign he will allow you his light to shine when we walk in what in truth when we walk in honesty when we be like I was talking about it at another segment about honorable like Jabez amen God will do that for us he does not want us to have to try to sabotage who his son is and who his spirit is that lives in us we sabotage him when we do that but God says you know what just walk in truth yeah yeah just be honest love one another Trust one another. The unity is maintained when we do what? When we trust one another. Unity is maintained. And together, we can do anything. If two people start a business together and they don't trust each other, that business will not last. I don't care what anybody say. After a while, it will split, it will crack, and there will be great losses. But the greatest loss will be the friendship they had and the trust that they had when they first began, knowing that they what? They wanted to do it together. Amen, amen, amen. So let us reconsider. And if we found ourselves in, in that state, if we find ourselves in that state tonight and we know we need to repent, let's ask God to forgive us. And God, I'm asking you on behalf of America, forgive us for the lies that have been told from every position from every uh, stance and every posture in America, Lord God, including our churches and our legislations, Father. We ask that you will forgive us in the name of Jesus, and we repent, Lord. God, give us to be honest and open. Give us not to make promises on things that we cannot deliver, but most of all, give us to spend quality time with you so we know how to answer somebody, God, and the manner in which we should answer them. In Jesus' name, Father, we just thank you and we bless you for this word tonight it's a harsh word but it's a true word God we do not make any apologies for what has been said you have given it to us we have delivered it I pray that it will sit in the hearts of your people Lord God and that it would resonate father and bring forth purity and cleansing of our souls God I pray that in prayer that you will reveal to us every hidden agenda that we have that's contrary to your will master in the mighty name of Jesus Lord and I pray that you will save every unsaved soul that is listening at this hour God that Jesus would come in there to their life and transform them and make them part of the body of Christ we bless you tonight thank you for joining MDL ministries but heart matters praise God and may your heart be purified after this word tonight God bless you (laughs) 